Welcome to Hard Talk from Johannesburg. I'm Stephen Sacker. South Africa is a proud democracy, and in democracies, voters get to give their verdicts on their leaders. It's called accountability, and it might be about to bite the ruling African National Congress. They've been in power here for 29 years since the apartheid system was overthrown, but Right now, South Africa is in a big mess with a protracted energy crisis, shocking levels of unemployment and inequality, and systemic corruption. My guest is the Secretary General of the ANC, Fikile Mbalula. Is his party about to pay the price of failure? Fekile Mbalula, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you for having us and welcome to Lutulia House. It's a great pleasure to be here. How disappointed are you with the state South Africa is in today? South Africa is undergoing challenges like uh, many other countries. Uh, but I think uh, to put us into a category of a failed state, it's an exaggeration. Um, I can give... But you, th you think that's a conversation that South Africans are having amongst themselves? Well, it comes from uh, pockets of uh, the uh, powerful thinkers in the country who project us as uh, uh, displaying uh, characteristics of a failed state, of course. Uh, we may not be too defensive to that. If certain things are not resolved, we will become a failed state. But we, uh, uh, we are not uh, journeying to, uh, towards that direction. But the reality is that if you are a young South African reaching adulthood today, you only have a one in two chance of actually finding a job. 50% of young people are out of work. A state should be able to provide work for its people, should ensure that the economy functions. We have a South Africa today where 60% uh, of your people are living under the poverty line. People living under the poverty line is a reflection of the state of the economy that has been battered, uh, both informed by global features of uh, the economy that uh, is fluctuating at an international level, which has had an impact on our own economy, but also partly some of our own weaknesses in terms of managing the economy well. And uh, we are on the recovery and objectively, the COVID-19 messed up uh, a lot of countries. The Ukraine-Russia war in itself has shattered most economies in the world and it has brought a high level of cost of living uh, and a number of challenges but, that have affected adversely the developing nations. So but, but some Mr. of the features that we see in terms of the economy of South Africa are not immune to us only. If you look at the, the state of unemployment in Europe in some of the advanced economies, it is uh, earth shattering. Yes, nothing like it is here though. And Mr. Secretary General, we have to face one simple fact. Your party, the ANC, has been in power for 29 years and you quite literally cannot even keep the lights on in this country we, we, today. We, we, we have been in power for less than 30 years and uh, in that... Three we, decades in, and you can't keep the lights on. From 300 years of uh, deprivation and a mismanaged country and the economy. We have been able to cushion our people from the West uh, in these 30 years, and we still regard ourselves a young democracy. I can tell you, for, in, for an example, uh, we have connected more of our people to the grid like never before, and small businesses in this country, where even people in the deep rural have never had an opportunity to 
have a taste of what is it to live with an electricity. But what they are living with today across it's this country... It's a load shedding that we are going to crash and defeat you, you them. Call, yes, you call yes. it load shedding. It yes. basically means the power is out. It, where we are sitting in headquarters right now, the power was out until literally five minutes ago. It's going to go out again late this afternoon for another two and a half hours. People in your country are going to go home from work tonight. They're going to sit in their ha homes and they are going to sit in candlelight with no power. Are you not ashamed that after three decades in power, controlling ESCOM, the, the power company, which is a state-owned enterprise, are you not ashamed that this I, is can, the reality? Can, can, can I explain to you the problem of South Africa's load shedding is a challenge of uh, demand and supply. We did so much for this country, connecting businesses and our people to the power grid, and uh, we did not balance that with uh, infrastructure development uh, uh, as the long-term strategy. And that has actually affected us. But it doesn't mean that we'll not get out of it. Yeah. The yes. former president, Thabo Mbeki, has said that for years and years and years, ESCOM, which is a state-owned enterprise, told the ANC government that without massive investment in the energy sector, they would not be able to provide enough power for this country. At the time, Mbeki says the ANC, ANC refused to listen. He said recently, ESCOM was right, we in the ANC were wrong. You have to own this crisis. What I'm saying to you, it might not be sufficient for you to understand when I talk about an imbalance in terms of energy supply and demand that did not balance with the rollout of infrastructure development. We have built uh, uh, power utilities, but we did not refurbish some. And uh, that coincided with our plans in terms of addressing the just transition. Decommissioning some of the utilities also has affected the progress that we seek to make to maintain the lights on. But all of that has now been addressed and is being attended to. Yeah, you say this is all being addressed. South Africans would only wish that were true. The acting CEO of ESCOM said, the risk of stage eight outages this winter is extremely high unless things change. And right now, they don't look as though they're gonna change. What they have said to us and, and the plan that they are implementing to address the surge of winter power failures, they will stabilize that through diesel. But we're not looking at short-term measures. We're looking at the totality of things that we need to do to solve this problem of load shedding. The renewables, how do we deal with that? But how do we also deal with the capacity which we've got of nuclear? And then how do we deal with the question of maintenance and the refurbishment of our plants? And that is what uh, is important. Mr. Secretary the, the, General, the, the, you're the, not being straight with the South African people. You I said, am, just, very, you said I, I, just hours ago that this problem will be solved by the end of the year. There is not one person inside ESCOM, inside the energy sector, who believes that to be true. Indeed, the chair of ESCOM said just a few months ago, this will continue for the next two years. We have given government and all our ministers that not even before end of the year. Everything must be done to do away with load shedding. That's what we have said. And if that, in terms of our projection, could happen before end of the year, we are happy about that. We, we, this load shedding has just uh, made a mess of our country and projected us as something else. It's so costing it you, be, according to your Reserve Bank, it's costing correct. you at least 2% of absolutely. GDP. Absolutely. You so can't afford that. We can't, we, we can't afford that. And that is why uh, we are focused in terms of dealing with it. It is an Achilles heel. And I can't tell you tonight uh, or any time that uh, this is an easy matter for our government. Surely, after COVID-19, this is the biggest challenge that has actually faced us internally. It's very candid of you to country. say this is an Achilles heel, because yes. Achilles heels tend to uh, bring people down. And if this continues, it will bring the ANC down, won't it? 
it will affect the fortunes of the ANC to resist the outright majority. It will, if ever it is not dealt with uh, decisive. It will affect, but it will not take ANC totally out of power. Mr. Secretary General, isn't the truth that this load shedding crisis is going to have such a damaging impact on the ANC because it not only reveals strategic incompetence going back decades, but it also reveals systemic corruption. Andre de Reuter, the former CEO of ESCOM, he has said that organized criminal cartels have been operating inside the state-owned energy company. He says that the ANC knows about it. One senior minister acknowledged it to him and said, to paraphrase him, that the comrades have to eat. And another senior figure inside the ruling party, according to Mr. De Reuter, was actively involved in the systemic corruption. The less said about uh, De Reuter, the better, because because it's he's, too embarrassing? He, he, no, he, he, he should be telling us that these are the steps he has taken. The minister is not the minister of the maintenance of law and order and the maintenance of justice in this country. It but is if the he law reports systemic criminality he, 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 linked to the he, he, ANC, he, don't you he, want to know about it? All what he could do that is best in terms of dealing with the challenges that are facing ESCOM was to write a book, which is not conclusive, all in all including giving us, that is why I've taken him to court and I'm suing him, not for money, but for saying to him, bring what you're saying to the fore, because you failed as an agent of the law he in the says, position that you occupied to take that matter to law, because there are he, laws in this country that require him as a chief executive officer, not to seek permission from a politician, he told, but to take to it him, to law he enforcement. He told ministers, he certainly told Mr. Praveen Gordon, Gordon public it, enterprise minister. Minister Gordon is not a minister of police or even commissioner of police. He's a minister. And if Minister Gordon could be implicated in corruption or any other minister, why will a uh, uh, director go and report him uh, to, to a politician and not report to his counterparts, Badoi and everybody and say, help me, there is corruption. Give me the names and take that to law enforcement. You've got a partner in me in fighting corruption. You just That's mentioned. That's all what I'm saying on behalf of the NC. And you just I'm not interested in his shenanigans about posturing and all of that. All right. But doesn't the, the, matter. The, 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 the basic point that the South African people are interested in is who is on the take? Who is corrupt inside the government? And what we know, not from Mr. De Reuter, but what we know from the Zondo Commission, which has been painstakingly looking at this so-called state capture, where money from, that should go to help the people of this country build a better country is being siphoned off by criminals and their partners in government. What we know is that 14 billion rand of ESCOM contract, contracts went to state capture, to criminality. We know that 41 billion rand was looted from Transnet, the main transport state-owned enterprise, uh, uh. by state capture. This is not for discussion. The Zondo Commission has investigated, and that's what it Who found. Who established the Zondo Commission? Is the ANC. Well, as you, a you, major, expect, you expect credit, as a major, you expect as, credit as a, for that? As a measure of fighting corruption, I don't expect credit for that. I'm saying do not be economic with your projection of the past as though it was not dealt with. That's the problem you people are all about. There was Zondo Commission, it simply fell from the sky, it happened on its own, the ANC was just folded arms and allowed corruption to, to deal with. Can a failed state do that, to establish a commission to fight a, a, a corruption? So and you, learn tell from me, it? you tell me Let the me tell you, figures inside the, the figures, ANC the figures, who have been brought to can, justice. Have you, been, have you been told, I can't give you now the numbers, how many billions have been covered through forfeiture unit, which has been beefed up in the fight against state capture and getting money that has been stolen as a result of corruption in this country? As we speak, you're not emphasizing that. Correctly so. 
The report of the Zondo Commission does say those things, but who established the Zondo Commission? It's the ANC. Where are the big fish where in have the you government seen, and the ANC where, who are currently behind bars for systemic corruption? The work in terms of this commission has just ended a year ago. Law enforcement is a lot of resources have been injected into, into law enforcement. Special investigations to investigate this corruption are, are being undertaken. The Guptas have run away from this country. We are still fighting their extradition from Dubai. Are you also aware of the degree to which overseas investors are now turning away from South Africa? Neil Fronman, the CEO at Sabania Stillwater, which I think is the biggest employer in the mining sector in South Africa, he says business investment in South Africa is on strike. Investors now are very negatively disposed to this country. They've lost faith and they've lost trust. For outside investors, they look at the foreign policy, diplomatic orientation of South Africa. They see that right now you are locked in a tense dispute with the United States because the US sees you as deeply sympathetic to Vladimir Putin's Russia, despite the Russian all-out invasion of Ukraine. We have explained those issues. Our government is dealing with those matters with the United States of America. We are not locked in any dispute of any form. And uh, we have none aligned when it comes to the conflict in Russia. And uh, that is the line we're pursuing. Well, the U we, for, for we, a start, we, the U.S. ambassador here in South Africa said that he had evidence that weapons had been loaded I met, onto I a met, Russian... I met, I met with him yesterday. He apologized for being overzealous and uh, saying things that he shouldn't have said. Yeah, you, you say and he's apologized. He, we have not heard him himself issue an apology. Well, I am saying to you, he have apologized. I met him right here in the Revolutionary House yesterday. Your government has, has launched an investigation about that alleged weapons it shipment. Is, it is Can you categorically guarantee to me here and now, as the head of the ANC, that no weapons were put on board that vessel? Our government has reassured the ANC that uh, there is in nothing to the, to the truth about weapons uh, being exchanged between our countries. I, I, I phrase my question carefully. Can you now categorically say no weapons were put on board I, I, that I, Russian I, ship? I, I, I've explained uh, to you that uh, there is an a, a action that has been taken by our government in terms of investigating. South Africa is a, a treaty member of the International Criminal Court. If Putin comes here in August as planned, your government will be obliged to arrest him. As head of the ANC, do you believe your government should and indeed will arrest if Vladimir Putin? If it was Putin? according to the ANC, we will want President Putin to be here even tomorrow. You would? To come to, come, to, come to our country. But, you uh, would welcome Vladimir Putin here right now. Of course, we will welcome A man who is being investigated for war crimes by the International Criminal Court. We will Criminal welcome Court. him to come here as part and parcel of BRICS, but we know that we are constrained by the ICC in terms of uh, doing that. Putin is a head of state. Do you think that uh, a head of state can just be arrested anywhere? How many crimes have your country committed in Iraq? How many crimes? Have everyone else who's so vocal today committed in Iraq and Afghanistan? Have you arrested them? You, you have know, not. You know the impact that You're this stand of yours... You're making a lot of noise about putting in state of working for peace between Ukraine and Russia, and you failed to resolve the war. Where are the weapons of mass destruction? Tony Blair went to Iraq and claimed that there are weapons of mass destruction. Did you see anybody standing against that in the United Kingdom and Britain? More than uh, millions of people have died in Iraq and yeah. Afghanistan, and there are no weapons of mass destruction. We know what the war is about Mr. Secretary General. between Russia and Ukraine. We want peace. That's what is important, so that the world can thrive. And organs and institutions of the world that institute world peace must not be conspicuous by their silence in deciding... Right. Decisively we, we, we don't have much time left. I, just want, I want to bring it back to uh, domestic South African politics before we end. Uh, you acknowledge with me very candidly that, that the load shedding 
is causing real political damage to the ANC. You called it an Achilles heel. You know the opinion polls show that the ANC right now is sunk well below the 50% mark in terms of support, which means in the 2024 election, it is highly likely you will not win a parliamentary majority. You're probably, if you can rule at all, going to have to rule by coalition. Are you looking at Julius Malema's economic freedom fighters as a partner for the ANC after 2024? I've been heading ANC elections now for over a decade. I've never gone to an election where the polls have been positive about the incumbent. Because of the sense of incumbency, you will always be affected negatively by the polls. Well, well forgive we me, but in previous the elections, the ANC, the ANC has po polled 60%, 70%. No, this time you're at no, the low 40s. No, we didn't. We were favored by the fortunes, our fortunes in the elections because we're the new president, but the ANC polled below 50 in the last election and even before that election. Who will work with in the election uh, going forward uh, in terms of this country? Uh, we as the ANC, we're not working to achieve the result of a coalition. And just one more question about Malema. His manifesto commitments are quite clear. He'll tell South Africans if they vote for him, he's going to confiscate land without compensation. He's going to nationalize key industries, including the mines and the banks. If you are to do a deal with Malema, you will have to consider whether you're prepared to take on his program. We don't have dealings with anybody, and we don't uh, looking at deals in 2024. We are working very hard for our people because we draw our mandate from our people. Uh, the dealings with anybody have not worked in terms of uh, the local government elections and the coalitions, and that is why we have adopted a framework that must guide us. Most of the coalitions in this country have collapsed, and that is why as the ANC, we have been working with a framework of stabilizing the commission, I mean the, the coalitions, in the hung municipalities. And uh, South Africans can see for themselves that coalitions don't bear any fruit. I'm sure you'd agree with me that democracy is all about accountability. It gives people the right to hold their leaders to account. After 29 years, with the state South Africa is in today, where you literally can't even keep the lights on, do you think that you in the ANC deserve, deserve the continued support of your people? In that 30 years, we have connected our people to the grid. We have guaranteed and given our people social security. We have given our people decent housing. We have faltered on electricity, which is load shedding, a single biggest demand for our people and our economy, and we are going to solve it. And doing the misrule of 300 years, in 30 years, we have done so much and yet we are defined by one single issue. We will defeat that issue. As the African National Congress, we are determined to ensure that load shedding is something of the past. It does not erode everything good that we have done. Not that in that 30 years we did nothing wrong. We did falter. We made mistakes. We did veer away. We accept. And that is why we are determined to come back we renew ourselves, we change things, we fight corruption, we fight even the possibility of degenerating to a failed state. That's what we are determined to do as the ANC. And we have to end there, but Fakile Mbalula, I Salute. thank you very much for thank being you. on Hard Talk. Thank you. Thank you very much.